everybody and welcome back to Mr. Smith's YouTube channel. Um, so over the last few weeks we've been working on orthographic drawings and technical drawing techniques. Um, so basically by this point you should be able to read a technical drawing, understand the dimensions, do a little bit of math to find the, the dimensions that you don't have, um, and even draw your own technical drawings based off of an object. Alright, so now we're going to move into more of the 3D modeling side or the CAD side. So CAD stands for computer, computer aided design and it's this whole idea that we use computers to help us design parts. Um, you can design, you know, if you're in construction, you can design houses, uh, building layouts. I mean, it's just a whole lot of stuff you can do with it. Um, I know that some of you have already used SketchUp last year with Mr. Krill, so some of this will be a review. Um, what you have done with him though is more of um, construction layout, whereas I'm I'm going to teach you more of mechanical part modeling. So let's say that you're building something and there's a part you don't have. I'm going to show you how to actually 3D model and 3D print that part. All right, so let's jump into it. Um, first thing is if we take a look at our lesson plan for today. So today is September 15th and 16th. Um, I sent out a message to y'all. Um, most of y'all did not turn in your summative, so I want you to focus on that first. But if you have finished, I wanted to go ahead and post the video in case some of y'all wanted to move ahead. Um, so we're going to be using Google SketchUp for schools. And to get there, all you have to do is go to this link right here. It's big, bolded, and blue. All right, so if you go to this link, you're going to say that you are a student and you're going to continue and click launch. All right. And it'll take a minute to load. All right, this is an online platform. All right, so this is the kind of home area for, um, I'm gonna move my camera up. This is the home area for SketchUp. All right, so um, this is where we actually have all our files stored. We can create folders, etc. cetera. Um, but it's also where you create a new file when you're starting. They have just added this year, this little drop down here and now we have all these broken out. So we could do decimal inches, decimal feet, decimal uh, millimeters. If you're doing a layout for construction, you'd probably use architectural feet and inches. Um, but for ours, if we're gonna take a look at what we're doing, our numbers are kind of big, um, like 50, 25. So it doesn't make sense for those to be inches. So I want you to use centimeters. All right, 50 centimeters is not that big, so our part will come out actually being a pretty nice size. All right, so when you start, hit the drop down and go to decimal centimeters. All right, and you're going to click that and just give it a second. Again, this whole software is off in a cloud somewhere, so it takes a minute to load. All right, so this is Temple Grandin. Um, Temple Grandin is famous for creating humane, humane ways to kill cows so that we could eat their meat. Um, she is a, a bit of a savant. Um, there's a whole documentary about her. If you've never heard of her, um, it's pretty good. Um, but she's here just as a reference. Um, she's here as a reference for just how tall a person is. So if you're modeling a house, your house would need to be bigger than Temple Grandin. All right, so I'm going to click and just click on her and then hit delete. All right, so now I have this whole work area here um, to actually start my model. So as I'm modeling today, I'm going to be focused on um, telling you the names of the tools and what they do. All right. And what we're going to do is we did a series of four different drawings. So now we're going to take our drawings. So if you still have your drawing and we're actually going to create the isometric view as a 3D model. All right. So we're going to use this information that we put on our top front and side view to actually make 3D models. All right. So when I'm looking at this, I can, you know, I can tell that I'm going to probably need to start with this little bottom area here. All right. And what I want to do is I want to start by drawing a rectangle. All right. And this rectangle is going to be 60 on one side. And then how long is it? Okay. It's going to be 115. So I'm going to start with a rectangle that is 115 by 60. All right. So right here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six one down is your rectangle tool. All right, and I'm going to click and start drawing a rectangle. I'm not going to click a second time. I only clicked once because you're going to type in the measurement. 
So I'm gonna type in uh, 60 comma. So if you look at the bottom right of the screen right now, you'll see that it says 60 comma and then 115. All right, so I know I need a rectangle that is 60 by 115, so I type 60 comma 115, and there we go. I can go down here and I can grab, I can use this tool here and it'll zoom all the way in. And then I can grab this zoom tool here and I can use it to zoom out some. And then I can use the rotate tool or the orbit tool to kind of move around. All right, so all your zooming and movement tools are down here on the bottom. So we've got our rectangle, but the thing about it is it's not actually a rectangle. It has this cut right here, all right? So you see this cut? So we need to draw in this cut and make it. But to do that, we actually have to come in here and over here to get the correct angle for that diagonal. So what is the width of this part? Well, if I look over here, I can see that it's 12, or if I look up here, it's 12. So I need to come in 12 on my model. So we use, right here, third up from the bottom, we use the tape measure tool. All right, the tape measure tool allows us to actually create grid lines and grid points, or not grid, guide. Guide lines and guide points for us to um, use for our measuring and cuts, etc. So I'm gonna click on this corner, and I'm gonna start just along this line. And remember, I needed 12. So I'm not gonna click a second time, but I'm gonna go down and press one, two, enter. And now look, I have this little point right here. So Mr. Smith, how can I check to see if that's actually 12? So if you go over here to your tape and you click on it, this second tool here is called the dimension tool. If you click on the dimension tool, you can click and click and it's 12. So let's go ahead and check those earlier dimensions. If I go here and here, that's 60. And if I go here and here, that was 115. So as you're modeling, you should be dimensioning also just so you can check everything. All right, so at this point, we're good. We got our little point here for a 12. All right, so now let's check our drawing again. So now I need to do this part, right? I need to do this 20 right here. I need to come in 20, all right? Come in 20 so I can draw that connecting line. So I go grab my tape again, I click on the corner, and I come in and type 20, enter. So now I have this point. So I have two points, and I need to connect them. So I'm gonna go and grab my line tool, which is the pencil, all right? Just grabbing the pencil, and I'm gonna click and click. All right, so that is the separating line that we're gonna use here in a minute. All right, one thing I forgot when we started was to save, guys. So to save, you click on the word untitled up here, click on your OneDrive, and then give it a name. Um, so this is gonna be SketchUp uh, number one, bracket model, all right? I'm gonna put the word YouTube in front of it because working on my YouTube video. All right, so, um, now that we have this, we can take our eraser tool, and now if we just delete these two lines, we're left with the thing that we had, or the, uh, the shape that we were going for. All right, so I'm gonna grab my dimension tool again, and I'm gonna dimension over here. All right, that's 20, that's what we wanted. So now we need to actually add some depth, all right? so. We need to come up. So how far up does this go? Well, if I come down here, I see that it's 12, or here I see that it's 12. All right, so I need to come up 12. So the next tool we're gonna use is this one right here. It's called the push-pull tool. And what it allows you to do is either push or pull a shape to give it some depth or some material. All right, so I'm gonna click this and start pulling up. I'm gonna let go, and then I'm gonna type one, two, enter. So that way it pulls it up to 12. All right, so we are part of the way done now. All right, so we came up 12. Good time to grab my dimension tool and quickly throw that 12 dimension on there. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so now I wanna work on this back piece right here. So this back piece is 60 tall, right? But we've already come up 12. 
So I need to do 60 minus 12, which is 48. So I now need to, I need to draw a rectangle there and pull it up 48. So draw a rectangle and pull it up 48 um, so that we can have that back piece. So I'm gonna go in here, grab my rectangle tool, and I'm gonna draw a rectangle on the back here because we've already figured out that that's 12. All right, and then we've already come up 12, so we need to come up 48 more. All right. So we had already come up 12, right? We did 12 right here, so we needed to come up 48 more to get to 60. So I can double check by taking my dimension tool, and if I dimension right there, what do I get? I get 60. All right, so I know that now that I have done this correctly, all right, if I got 60. So we have this one last little piece here, all right? We have to do this little guy right here. So we know that we're gonna start with a rectangle and pull that rectangle up 23, all right? And then we're gonna have to add a circle on top. So especially if you look at the side view here, like this is a rectangle and then we have added a circle and another circle. All right, so how far in does that rectangle go? Well, it goes 50, right? The diameter is 50 there, so we know that this rectangle is gonna go 50 in. So I'm gonna come back to my model. I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool, and it's gonna go right here, and it's gonna be 50 comma 20. All right, I need to go 50 this way, and it needs to be 20 wide because that was on our drawing. And there you go. All right, so that's our rectangle we're gonna start with. And now I go back here and I can see right here that the 23 is how far I need to come up. So again, push pull is how you add material. All right, so I'm gonna grab the push pull. I'm gonna take that and pull it up to 23. All right. So that changed this dimension because we had the 12 and then we came up 23, so it changed to 35. I can grab my dimension tool here and actually, well, actually I should probably delete it and then re-dimension if I want that one back, right? So if I want this back and if I want to check that 23, that way I just split that dimension. All right, so now we need to add a circle right here. All right, we need to add a circle right here and that circle is gonna have a diameter of 50. So our circle tool, if you click on the rectangle tool, the circle tool is inside of that. And SketchUp auto snaps to the midpoint. See how it says midpoint there? So if I just snap that and draw a circle, then I can take my eraser tool and delete this bottom part that I do not need, all right? Take my push-pull tool now and push that circle all the way across. So notice that what I'm doing is I'm holding down on the mouse and pushing, and then I'm placing the cursor over this edge so that it snaps. See how it snapped? So like I'm really far, really far, really far, snaps to that edge. All right, so now I can just take my, um, so now I need, actually, now I need another, um, now I need another circle here for the cut we're gonna do, and it is diameter 25. So I'm gonna take this, find the midpoint again, all right, circle tool midpoint. All right, if the diameter is 25, if you look at the bottom right down there, it says you want the radius. So I gotta take the 25, and I have to divide it by two and get 12.5, all right? So if I type in 12.5 enter, it'll give me the correct sized circle. So now I can take my eraser tool and delete all the lines I don't need. All right, so whenever you have a curve like this, you can't just click and delete. You have to hold down control, and then you click and drag across the line and what that does is it smooths the line for you. So I'm holding down control. And if you look at the eraser icon, you see that it gets this little like sheet above its head. So 
turn on control, and I click and drag. All right, so we're going to come back to our push-pull tool here, right? And look, I can push it. But if you ever push it into another material, like I'm doing now, it does a cut. So your push-pull tool can add material, or if you push it into another material, it'll do a cut. All right? So when I do this cut, I want to make it even with this back edge. And when I do, it should. It didn't do it very well there. Oh, it's because I left a line here. Make sure you delete that line. All right? Now I'm going to do the push here even on the edge, and it cut it right through. So now at this point, this looks exactly like this. We're just missing a few dimensions. So I'm going to grab the dimension tool here, and um, I need to make sure I dimension this inside circle. See, diameter 25, and this circle is radius 25, which means diameter 50. All right, so at this point, I do believe we have everything dimensioned. Uh, we might have missed this one, but other than that, it looks good. All right, and we have completed, completed our first model. All right, this model looks exactly like this. All right, our isometric matches, all our dimensions match. So we could actually send this file over to one of my 3D printers and it would print this out. All right, so couple things, all right? If you want to color this, right? Like, let's say that you're doing a rendering and you want it to actually look like a certain material. If you go over here to the right to this little box that has the black and white checkered, this is your appearance area, all right? And let me move my webcam a bit, all right? So inside of here, you have all these colors, right? So I could go in here and color it green, red. It works just like paint, whatever I want, all right? Or if you click this magnifying glass here, you can pick a different material. All right, there's lots of different materials you can pick. So maybe I want this to be metal. Um, this kind of looks like a toolbox on the back of a truck. So I'm gonna click that and then I'm gonna come in here and I can actually color. Uh, maybe, I, maybe I just wanna color parts of it or maybe I wanna color the whole thing. I'll make the whole thing metal. All right, so at this point, I've now created this entire metal model, which I think looks pretty cool. All right, so two more things. All right, uh, in the past, there's been students that try to turn in each other's work. So what I want you to do is put your name on it. The way we put our name on it is that you come down here to the circle tool or the square tool, and there's these, it's called 3D text. So this little A down here. If you click that, you can type your name. All right, we only want our height, let's say we want our height to be, I don't know, three centimeters and the extrusion to be one. And then if I click okay, there's my name. All right, kind of small, right? I didn't really do a good job planning that out. So if you go over here to your move tool, this bottom tool right here is called the scale tool. If you click on it and then go to your name, you can actually click and make it bigger. All right, so now you can see my name is, it's looking pretty good, honestly. Um, if you wanna change the color, again, you can pull up your appearance. Um, I'm gonna go into the colors, maybe, I think blue might look good. Actually, maybe white. Yeah, see, I, look, I like that, looks good. All right, so somewhere on your model, you can do it right here, you can do it on the back wall like I did. I want you to put your name. All right, how you were gonna turn this into me is you were gonna take a screenshot. So I want you to find a good angle where I can see your name and I can see all of your dimensions. And then if you go down here and type in snipping tool, all right, so if you go on your computer and type in snipping tool, which mine did not pop up, strange. Snipping tool. Come on. All right, well, mine's not working. But if you use your snipping tool, you can actually draw a box around this to take a screenshot. All right, secondary way is if you hit print screen on your keyboard, it's usually at the top of the keyboard. And then if you go into paint, 
all right if you go into paint then you can paste it all right and you can see here it pasted my all mine all right but then you're just going to crop it down to something smaller control c control new don't save control v all right so here i just want you to take a screenshot and you are going to submit a screenshot of your model with your dimensions with your name on it all right and that's what i'm looking for when i'm going to be grading these all right so that's our first model um, if you i want you to focus on the summative that we're doing this week um, but if you get done you can go ahead and watch this video and start working with sketchup so you can familiarize yourself with it all right that's it for me guys as always um, let me know if you need any help uh, you can contact me through email it's learning remind whatever you need to do all right Thanks so much.